Hey everyone, it's Denise Brown. This summer as I was caring for my mom, I read something about caregiver burnout and boy did it really put me on fire. It really pissed me off to be honest with you because I thought this isn't reflective of what burns us out. And I started thinking about it. And because I was in a situation where I was really getting so frustrated with our hospice provider, I was so burnt out from trying to get them to schedule us and meet our needs. It was a nightmare. Anyway, it was the system that was burning me out. It wasn't caring for my mom. I knew she was dying. I wanted to be there for her. But the system added so much aggravation and stress it caused me sleepless nights. It was terrible. So I posted on Twitter about caregiver burnout is really system burnout and we need to talk about it in a different way. So I had added system navigation training on our certified caregiving consultant program probably about two years ago. And it, when I added it in, I thought probably seven systems really create a caregiving system for us during our caregiving experience. And then as I kept talking to family caregivers, they would mention another system just in casual conversation, not saying, oh, Denise, here's another system, but they would talk about it in such a way. I was like, oh my gosh, I missed that as a system. And then last week when I had that epiphany that we have to collect a different kind of caregiving data, I really started looking at, okay, well, what are the systems that we navigate and manage and advocate within during our caregiving experience. There's 15 of them. You might not encounter all of them, but at least 10 of them are part of your caregiving experience. So we are navigating at least 10 different systems, which means we have to learn 10 different systems. We have to be prepared to navigate and advocate and manage 10 different systems. Wow, no wonder we're exhausted. Here's the other piece of this. We are the only ones that touch all the systems within a caregiving experience. The other systems, the way they are structured are siloed. So for instance, think about your last hospitalization with your carry and think about that five minute discharge planning meeting you might've had. So the case manager says, Medicare is no longer going to pay for this hospitalization. So that's how the hospital interacts with the payer, Medicare. That's it. And then the discharge planner says, okay, so let's get you figured out for your carry to return home. But the discharge planner doesn't ask you about your family system, doesn't ask where your carry lives in terms of the neighborhood or the community system doesn't ask about your work responsibilities and how much time you have to figure this out. You figure it out. You figure out your family system, your workplace system, the community system, all of it on your own. And then you make the discharge happen. It's you that makes the discharge happen. You. Okay, so let's break down the 15 different systems over a period of 15 different interviews or 15 different videos that I'll do for you. So let's talk about community first. So I went to the Chicago Marathon about 10 days ago with my sister and brother-in-law. My nephew runs. We love to get there to cheer him on. It's a fabulous community event for our city. It's awesome. So we took a break because my niece lives by where we were stationed at the marathon. So we went to her apartment, turned on the marathon to watch it. And they were playing an interview with the woman who won the wheelchair division. And her story in that two minute interview was so inspiring. I thought I've got to learn more about her. So the New York Times did this amazing profile of her. Her first name is Susanna. She was in a car accident when she was a young girl. Her mom was driving, and it was, I think, during winter, and just a terrible tragedy. And as a result of the car accident, Susanna recovered and then began to use a wheelchair. Her community rallied around her by ensuring that all the curbs in their town were handicap accessible. 
So they redid their curbs to ensure that she could get wherever she needed to be in her wheelchair. And when she was young, they added an elevator in her high school that she would attend years before she was actually going to attend it. Wow. Think about that community system. And don't we wish that for everyone? I'm going to post the link to the New York Times interview about Susanna because her story, I, uh, anyway, just left me speechless. I was so taken by her and inspired by her and made me think, oh my gosh, what am I, what am I complaining about? I'm not going to complain again. Okay. So as I was thinking about her high school, adding an elevator years before she got to high school so that she was completely independent within her high school building, it made me think about a CTA or Chicago Transit Authority subway that's near my house that has, that is actually a platform you have to access. So you have to walk upstairs to go to a platform and then down to catch the train because the subway runs along the expressway. So you can't cross through the expressway. You have to go over the expressway and then down to catch the train. So there's an elevator. But guess what? Sometimes that elevator doesn't work. And I think about that. If I'm in a wheelchair and I'm trying to get downtown for work, I don't necessarily know if that elevator works or not. So I might go to the station to get to work and the elevator doesn't work. I might have to call someone to help me so that I can get on the train. So for a family, maybe they have a plan when I can take the train because the elevator is working. And maybe there's a backup plan that someone in the family has to help me when I get there and the elevator doesn't work. Now, isn't that crazy? And yet there are versions of this story for you within your community that you encounter on a regular basis. What I find is that we can't necessarily count on everything working within our community for ourselves and for our carees. So we're always thinking, okay, we're going to go to the doctors, but what if the building is old and somewhat compliant, but not completely compliant? I actually had a family caregiver tell me that when she went to her doctor's office with her caree, it was such a nightmare because they weren't completely compliant. And she would ask the nurse in the doctor's office to bring out the ramp so that they could have her carry in her, his wheelchair go up the ramp to get into the um, doctor's office and the nurse would be just completely put out by it. What? Oh my gosh. Okay, so just that system can burn us out. But that's just one and there's 14 more. So feel free to share any insights and experiences you have within your community that challenges you do you during your caregiving experience. And tell us about the successes within your community that help you during your caregiving experience. I just want to actually add one, one more piece. So I live by a stop for the buses in our school district. And so I see the parents in the morning and the afternoon gathering at the corner and they're conversing and chatting. It's an opportunity to be social. In caregiving, we don't necessarily have those natural organic opportunities to connect with each other. In a doctor's office, I have never struck up a conversation with a fellow family caregiver. It just isn't possible, I don't think. Maybe I'm wrong, but I just don't do it. In a emergency room, waiting room, I'm not gonna do it either. And those feel like the places where we actually connect with other family caregivers or see them. So in our caregiving experience, we have to seek out support from others who understand what it's like. It's not a natural, organic situation that happens because we're standing together at the bus station or we're talking together at the PTA meeting or we're at the playground together. And I think we also have to look within our communities about what are the opportunities to create natural organic opportunities for family caregivers to connect. And it's not just family caregivers connecting with each other, it's also connecting with former family caregivers so that we can connect with 
someone who's been through it, who can give us some guidance. Okay, so that's the community system. Thank you so much for watching and please share your data. I've got a link below that connects you to the survey. It'll take you about five minutes. You might wanna gather some of your numbers prior to taking the survey and that might take you about five minutes. So five minutes total, you get a certificate of recognition that honors you for navigating, managing, and navigating through at least 10 of the caregiving systems. And then there's social media templates that you can use to share your data as well. I wanna change the conversation that we have about what caregiving is really like. It's system navigation and it's a lot of systems that we navigate. Okay, thanks for all you do. Bye-bye.